Let's turn our Bible now at this time, and and uh, we're going to um, turn to uh, Matthew chapter one, and that will be our beginning point. But uh, that is just what it's going to be, our beginning point. <clears throat> our message this morning is simply, God has a plan. God has a plan. And the Bible really is a revelation of that plan that God has. We read this morning, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 1, and really the key verse in the book of Matthew, <clears throat> if you have um, taken one of um, our Bible courses, the key verse, I hope you remember, is Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. <clears throat> And of course, God's plan has been the salvation of mankind. And we are reminded of 1 Peter chapter 1, in which the Bible tells us, we are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Verse 20 of 1 Peter chapter 1, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. God's plan, revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the redemption of mankind. And uh, we are reminded of that plan today. Uh, today we're in Genesis chapter 12. In Genesis chapter 12. And we want to um, look at um, the first three verses of Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. <clears throat> Now, there's a lot in those three verses, but let's put it in context. Of course, the context is um, chapter 11, where we find that um, verse 4, all the earth, all the descendants of Noah are rising up in rebellion against God. And they said, Go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth. <clears throat> now God had a plan. God had a plan. And uh, God had a plan for the descendants of Noah. Um, he had a plan for them to fill the earth with a family that knew the truth, and would fill the earth with truth. Instead, man decided to stay in one place and to build a city and a religious system in rebellion against God. But you know what? God has a plan. God has a plan. 
And even though um, man did not uh, fulfill God's plan, God's plan was not going to be um, interrupted or lost. And so we find in chapter 12, um, God um, has a plan. And the Bible says, And God said unto Abram, and we're reminded of Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. This is the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of Abraham, the son of David. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, the virgin-born um, uh, child, the God-man who was sent from heaven, was conceived and married by the Holy Spirit, was born, died in Calvary's cross, who was foreordained before the foundation of the world that man might be saved from their sin. God has a plan. God has always had a plan. The center of that plan is the salvation in Jesus Christ. That has always been God's plan. God has a plan. In that plan, we see that God uses men. Now, really the story of the Old Testament is twofold. The story of the Old Testament is the seed of Jesus Christ. The book of Genesis lays out as the main focus of, of mankind and God's plan is the family, is the line through which the Savior was going to be born. We find, of course, uh, um, uh, that uh, um, it's going to be through Eve. It's going to be through the godly seed. We find that it's going to be the last remnant of the godly seed in the old world, Noah. We find it's going to be the son of Noah called Shem. And now we find, even though um, the mankind has rebelled against God, God is still going to fulfill his plan. And uh, um, in that plan, um, God uses man. It's an amazing thing, isn't it? We think of Noah. It says, now Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And you know, Abraham found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The Bible tells us that Abraham was a worshiper of idols in the land of Ur of Chaldees. You know, the, God, the plan of God is not based on um, what we deserve. It's based on what his will is. And is based upon his plan. And it is based upon those who will um, um, submit and surrender to his grace. You know, uh, people make a big mistake and they say, well, I'm not worthy. Well, nobody's worthy. That's just an old trick of the devil. But God has a plan and that plan, a man is in the center of that plan. But uh, in his plan, thirdly, we find that God has a test. God always has a test to see who he will use. And of course, we're seeing that we're talking about the very center of that plan as revealed in the lineage of the Messiah. I mean, the greatest thing um, um, in all of human history, you know, it's amazing how they try to make history, it's almost like the newspaper. They decide what the news is. And um, there could be something that's ten times as important, but they decide what they want to make the news. 
Well, you know, um, same like school textbooks. Um, <clears throat> as far as I understand, um, the experts tell me that the new textbooks have pages and pages and pages of the history of Islam. And uh, they may have a paragraph on the history of Christianity. But the fact is, every text, pitch, world history textbook ought to have as the center event of all history, the greatest event in all history, the center of the history of the world, Jesus Christ, the Savior, leaving heaven, born of a virgin, dying a cross. That's the center of human history. And in heaven, the saints and the angels will be shouting and, and, and singing the praise of that great event forever and ever and ever. Talk about uh, the Bible helps us focus on what's really the center of God's plan. Now in God's plan, though, God uses men. And so you see the center of God's plan is Jesus Christ and the redemption of mankind. And God's plan is always centered around that and those men who are around that plan. That's God's plan. But in that plan, God always has a test. And it's always the same. The Bible says, now as God is... All the nations of the world have rebelled against God, and God has decided in grace to choose one man. One man. Out of all the peoples of the world, God chose one man. It's amazing what God does with one person. You know, God may call you to be the first one to be saved in all of your relatives. And you may be the only one. And you say, why? Why? Because God in his grace has a plan. And he uses man in that plan. And it's an honor and a privilege to be called of God, to be a part of his plan. But he has a test. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Get thee out of thy country. Get out of their country. Get away. Get removed from your family, your kindred, and from your father's house, and, from a, and unto a land that I will show thee. You know, um, it's kind of interesting. Go to different countries of the world, you begin to see a little bit more of how maybe that really took, how that really is different than our thinking today. Now, when you go to Kenya, it's interesting. <clears throat> In Kenya, they kicked out the whites from running the businesses and... Um, <clears throat> Um, and now who runs all the businesses? Pakistanis and Indians. Vast majority of all the, the businesses is run by um, foreigners. And um, it's interesting. Um, you'll go to where they live and they'll have a big house. I mean, they'll have a big house. And they'll have um, a big house, and um, the, the mother and the father and will be there, and um, they'll have five children, and they'll be living there. And, uh, and uh, when everyone grows up, uh, they might be living there. The house just gets bigger. It's not a shack. When you say, say to Abraham, get away from your country and your kindred, it's a little bit more like that. 
They stuck together. But you know what? It was a test. It was a test. You know what God's test is? God's test is obedience. Forget about what the new evangelicals say about legalism. Forget about uh, what the modern Christians say. But throughout the Bible, God is, always has the same test. Obedience. And he said to Abraham, get thee up. Get thee up and go. Hebrews says it this way. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 8. Hebrews 11, 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. The test. Isn't it amazing? Has the test changed? Has the test changed? I'm thinking of an obvious verse in the Bible. John 15, 14. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Now, we could just elaborate on that, but we are not going to. But here's the test. Obedience. That's the test. Obedience. And Jesus said to the disciple, those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, ye shall be my disciples indeed, and the truth will set you free. The test. God uses man. God has a plan. In the center of that plan, God uses men. But in that plan, he has a test for every man that he will use. And it's simple. Obedience. Obedience to God. The Bible says, by faith he obeyed, not knowing whither he went. It wasn't, I'll do it my way. It wasn't, I have a better plan. It wasn't, um, um, no. It was, yes, just obedience. The spirit of the man who's in the center of God's plan is obedience. We see, obviously, the opposite in just the text we looked at. Man was disobedient. And God says, okay. Okay. But we have a great truth about that. The God who has a plan and who uses man in the center of that plan and tests that plan with obedience, that God is all-powerful. That God is all-powerful. We saw it last week, Genesis 11. They were of one language. They built a city, lest they be scattered. And God said, let's confound their language. Boom, it was done. <coughs> Mankind was scattered throughout the world with different languages unable to understand one another because God is all-powerful. But you know, God has a plan. 
And that God who has a plan is all powerful. And if we look at Genesis 12, we see some interesting truths here about that God and his, um, his plan. Verse 2, he says, I will make of thee a great nation. <clears throat> I will make of thee a great nation. Now in Abraham, we see God had a plan. Now without going into too much history today, we could say <laughs> Abraham's descendants are still the center of the world. One son of faith and another son of disobedience. The son of faith resulting in the Jewish nation. The son of Hagar, son of disobedience, the Arab peoples. <coughs> Amazing. And, of course, we talk about uh, Christians, Jesus, the son of Abraham, son of Jesus Christ, of David. Now you think of that today, you can almost put all the populations, the great majority of all the populations right there. Jews, Christians, Muslims. <clears throat> he said, I'm going to make of you a great nation. And we could say many things about um, the great nation of Israel. And we know today they are in unbelief. But he says, I will make of thee a great nation. Only God can do that. <laughs> Only God can do that. There are other men in this world, many millions, billions of men. But of Abraham, God said he'd make a great nation. And he says, I will bless thee. And even in disobedience, God has blessed the Jewish people. You think of that. Today, even today, the Jewish people are still Jewish people. They've retained their identity. <clears throat> they have retained their identity even in disbelief. And uh, we can learn a lot from the Jewish people. The reason the Jewish people have retained their identity is because they have retained, in many cases, their distinctiveness. And most nations of the world, when scattered abroad, have lost their distinctiveness. And they are lost into oblivion. And the same thing is happening to Christians today. Christians have lost their distinctiveness. They don't want to be distinctive. They want to blend into the world. But open your eyes. Get on an airplane. And if there's a Jew on that plane, a real uh, a, a Jew, you'll know it. They're not afraid to be distinctive. That's why they're still a nation. They're still a people. But this dispensation is going to end in failure, and it's because Christians want to blend into the world. That's not a part of the sermon, but I thought I'd give it to you. <clears throat> God is all-powerful. And it says, And I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great. <laughs> is his name great? This man who lived 4,000 years ago, is his name great? Yes. It says, and thou shalt be a blessing. I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse them that curse thee. What is the history of the world? The history of the world is the history of man's relationship to the Jewish nation. And those that have cursed her have been cursed. And those who have blessed her have been blessed. It's still true today. 
It's a revelation that God has a plan, and that God who has a plan is the God of the universe, and He is powerful. Now notice what else it says. It says, And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And that's because of Abraham was born Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. I remember going to, uh, I was in Michigan with my wife to a youth group reunion. We were in the restaurant. And uh, uh, a foreign looking person was behind us. And uh, I didn't know, you know, sorry, but, you know, I don't have a hard time distinguishing certain Orientals, you know. And so I'm kind of fumbling around, you know, whether, you know, he's Chinese or he's Hmong or, or whatever. And he said, oh, he says, I'm Vietnamese. So I say, Sin Chao, which means hello in Vietnamese. And uh, he liked that. And I said, how long have you been in America? He said, oh, I don't know. He said, five, six, seven, eight, nine years. I said, have you ever heard of Jesus Christ? He said, no. No. And I said, do you know who Jesus Christ is? He's the Son of God who left heaven to die on the cross for your sins so your sins could be forgiven. There is no other means whereby man's sin can be forgiven. There's no other name under heaven given among men uh, that, uh, for salvation but the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen? He's the one who died. The center of God's plan, Jesus Christ. And in thee shall all the nations of the world be blessed. Now you think about that. You want to be around his, the center of his plan. Because the God who is all powerful that is where he's working. The center of his plan. The further away you get from that plan, the less you will experience your God and his power. The closer you are to the middle of that plan, the more you will see his power in your life as you are close to the center of what he is interested in. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. You want to get mixed up in something that's not important to God? Well, that's the further away you're going to be from God's mighty power. He'll never leave you for, nor forsake you. We know that. But remember the people in Israel, he never left them nor forsook them either. In their 40 year of journey of disobedience, wandering in the wilderness, their shoes never wore out and their clothes never wore out. God was working, but they were far from the center of God's plan, weren't they? But then... Um, I want to say this, is that God has a plan, and I will say that he will fulfill his plan. God will fulfill his plan. He will fulfill his plan. A couple of verses I'd like to share with you. <clears throat> Zephaniah chapter 3.
Zephaniah chapter 3, we'll start with verse 8. Therefore wait upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to be prey, for my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour out upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. For then will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. Was God's will that the earth be filled with truth? Was it God's will that all mankind receive and know Jesus Christ? Yes. Is God's will that with one consent all would worship him together? Yes. Now man, in his rebellion, when they had the ability to all worship him with one consent, rebelled. But there's coming a day, the millennial kingdom, in which God's plan will be fulfilled. And all the earth, the Bible says, will speak one pure language. And they will all, with one consent, give glory to Jesus Christ. You know, God's will is going to be performed. You know, we are quite vain to think that somehow, that somehow God isn't going to fulfill his plan. We're quite vain to think that somehow that uh, we are so important that his will isn't going to be performed if we're stubborn and rebellious and proud and independent. <laughs> Don't be so foolish. What did God say to the Jews? What did the Lord Jesus say to the Jews? What did, what did John the Baptist say to the Jews as he prepared the way for Jesus' coming? What did he say? He said, God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. He doesn't need you. His plan is for you. And you'll be blessed in his plan. You'll be blessed in his plan. But he doesn't need you. His plan is going to be done. His plan was to fill the earth in the days of Noah. They wouldn't do it. But he did it, didn't they? Amen. He did it. God's plan will be done. Our last point, number six, is the world is blessed by those who are willing to be in the center of God's plan. And in thee all nations shall be blessed. The world is blessed by those who are willing to be in the center of God's plan. Isn't that exciting? The world. He said to Abraham, he says, now go to a country Get up, get out of here. I'm not going to tell you where I'm taking you. We studied it in Sunday school class. But you know where he took them? He took them to Canaan. One of the evil, evil places on the earth. The descendants of Ham. Isn't that amazing? Think about Daniel. Great hero of the Bible. Where did they send Daniel? Sent him to wicked, wicked Babylon. <laughs> you see, the test is obedience, isn't it? The test is obedience. He was testing their obedience. You know, he's testing our obedience today. We, our world is getting be becoming more and more wicked. But the test is still the same. Who 
will obey God. Those who will, will obey God in his plan will be blessed and they will be a blessing to the whole world. Isn't that wonderful? They will be a blessing to the whole world. I like what Dan, Josh, uh, uh, Joshua said, choose you this day whom ye will serve. But God in his grace has a test. And it's a test for you and I. Now, two final questions today. The first question is, have you found God's plan of salvation. Have you found God's plan of salvation in Jesus Christ? That's the center of his plan, isn't it? Have you found God's plan of salvation in Jesus Christ? That's the big question. No, I, not, I didn't say, do you know the name Jesus? Now, praise the Lord, you do. Because there's a lot of people who don't ever know, have never heard. I said to that Vietnamese person, have you ever heard of Jesus Christ? They said, no. I mean, this is in Michigan. Michigan used to be the land of Baptist churches. What a blessing. What a privilege to know about Jesus Christ. What a privilege it is to know the plan of salvation. Wow. But that's, that, that's great. But you have to do something about it. You have to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. And you know what? Probably the journey to find that plan is going to as well be hinged on obedience. There will be a test. There will be a test. I remember Barbara Kendellen. She was invited to our first revival meetings in 1979 with Len Saunders. And um, her neighbors invited her. She didn't come. She felt bad that she promised to come and she didn't make it. So... She came to church. Well, we didn't, yeah, church. It was real church because we didn't have a building. We met in savings alone. She came to services next Sunday morning after the revival meetings. Would have been April 9th, 1979. And she came, heard the Bible. When she got home, this is what her husband said. Okay, now you're John the Baptist. And I can't go dancing anymore. Well, there was the test. Right there. The test. You know, God or the world. She was even unsaved. But you know, there's a little something in her heart. I don't know what it was, but she passed the test. Because she was back the next Sunday. And she was back the next Sunday. And I think the next Sunday she got saved. And eventually her husband got saved. But you know what? She had to pass the test, didn't she? Who will you obey? God or man? That's always a part of the journey that's involved in the center of God's plan. But the second question is, have you found God's plan of salvation in Jesus Christ? If you have, now the question is, are you passing the test? Is he able to use you? Is he able to use you? 
You pass the test, whatever the obstacles were, you put your faith in Christ, but now God wants to use you. And the test is the same. Obedience. It's God's will versus your will. It's God's word versus our word or the world. Obedience. As simple as that. Who will God use? Those that are willing to obey. And what about those who are willing to be obey? They will be in the center of the plan of God. They'll be close to the mighty working of a powerful, wonderful God. I remember a few years ago I preached uh, at BCM and I was preaching on new church work and I said, uh, um, I said, uh, now if you want to see, uh, live a life of miracles, um, give your life to the work of the church. But even more so, give your life to starting a church. And Matt Weber was there. And you, why don't you just call Matt Weber today and ask him if there's, he's got a life full of miracles. You know what he's going to tell you? Yeah. Yeah. He obeyed God. He put himself in the center of God's plan, which is the New Testament church. In fact, he started a New Testament church. And uh, that's where the, the center of the mighty working of God is found in the center of God's plan, the New Testament church, and getting out the gospel. The more you are committed to that, the more you will be in the center of God's mighty works in your life. And you will be a blessing to the world. The further away you get from God's plan, the less you'll see those mighty working of the all-powerful God in your life and in your family. But those who are in the center of God's will will see that they will be a blessing to the whole world. To the whole world. Still is true today. God has a plan. And he allows men to be a part of that plan. In that plan, he uses men. And he is going to fulfill his plan. Whether it's you or I, it doesn't matter. He'll find someone. Amen? Amen? He'll find someone that will serve him, who will love him, who will obey him, who will do his will. He'll find someone, and he'll use them. And he'll use them in a mighty, mighty way. Because our God, the God of the Bible, is all-powerful. And his will is going to be done. Heaven is going to be filled with people who have found his plan in Jesus Christ. And they will praise him forever and ever and ever. Will they ever regret? Will we ever regret having found the Lord Jesus Christ and serve him? Never. Never. Let's bow in prayer. Father, we thank you for the word of God today and thank you for the fact that, that your Bible gives us, the, your word gives us the big picture so that we can understand it. And Lord, as we look at the big picture today, Lord, help us to realize who you are and what is required of thee in your grace and mercy. 
He is still, you are still looking for an obedient people. People who obey the gospel. People who obey the Great Commission. People who obey your will to build the New Testament church. Lord, I pray that you'd use your word. Well, heads are bowed and eyes closed. You're here today and you say, you know what? I've not found the center of God's plan for my life. I've not found that salvation that God desires of mankind. That he purchased through Jesus Christ, his own son on Calvary's cross. You need to be um, saved from your sin. You need to be saved um, uh, from hell. You need to become a child of God. And he is looking for those who will obey the gospel and put their faith in in Jesus Christ. You're here today, say, you know what? Um, I know about Jesus. I know about some things of the Bible, but I don't know about this wonderful salvation that has been God's plan from the very beginning. And I don't know for sure I'm saved. I don't know 100% that I've been born again. I don't have that new life in Jesus Christ that you talk about. And it's real, it's so wonderful, miraculous. You say, Pastor, would you pray for me? That's what I need. I need to find God's plan for my life, the plan of salvation. Would you pray for me, anyone here today? Just lift up your hand, wherever you might be. Okay. You're here today and you say, you know what? God is speaking to my heart about that God is a plan And he's looking for men and women, children, who will be used in that plan. And you're drifting away from God's plan. You're drifting away. God may choose somebody else. Because his plan will be revealed. Perhaps you're failing the test. You've lost the spirit of obedience. You've gotten the spirit of independence, maybe the spirit of the world, the spirit of going your own way. Yeah, it's easy to catch. It comes right from within, and it comes right from the world and right from Satan. Um, but God is speaking to your heart and you say, you know, I've lost the spirit of obedience. I've lost the spirit of obedience. And I fear to be laid on the shelf, laid aside to do my own thing. And you say, you know, God is speaking to me. Lord, speaking to you about being in the center of your, his will for your life. And he's testing it. And you failed the test. And you say, you know, today, God has spoke to my heart. And he said, uh, I'm turning from that spirit of disobedience to the spirit of obedience right today. Instead of finding out how I can get away with things, I'm going to start finding out what I can, how I can obey and how I can obey even more thoroughly. I want to pass the test. I want to be usable to a gracious God. Perhaps you're here as a young person and uh, God has made it aware to you that um, he has a plan for your life and you need to submit to him and he'll make your life a blessing. Say, Pastor, pray for me that I'll pass the test. I'll be usable for God in his plan. We just slip up your hand. God is speaking to your heart. Okay. Amen. Number of different hands. Amen. God has spoken to your heart. Are you had, do you have the spirit of obedience? Or have you lulled to sleep with the world? Oh, the blessing of an almighty God working through your life. You can be a blessing. God is speaking to your heart. Anyone else? Say, Pastor, pray with me. God has spoken to my heart. Okay. Amen.
Lord, thank you for your word today. Thank you for humble hearts, anxious hearts to be used of you. We pray that, Lord, you said your word would not return void. And now I pray it accomplish its purpose. We put it in your hands in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor John, come.